Hello there reason people, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel and today we're going to be looking at the Nectar Panorama T6 and we're going to be going through the installation and getting it up and running within reason. So this is my first unboxing video so uh, should we have a look and see what we've got inside the box. So what you get inside the box is the keyboard, obviously, a manual, a license for Bigwig 8-track, and a USB cable. There are no CDs, so there's no drivers with it, and you have to download them. And to be perfectly honest, I think that's a, quite a smart move, because a lot of the times you don't know how long a product's been on the desk, and what do we do? We just throw the CD in the bin, and we just go and download them anyway. As you can see, I've now got the Nectar uh, T6 uh, on my desk but it's not actually wired up at this stage. And what I'll very quickly say is before you actually go and install this keyboard in your studio or wherever you go and actually install it, is make sure that you actually get the serial number. Yeah, get that serial number from the bottom because you're gonna need that for the registration process. So let's go through the registration process and actually setting up the Nectar itself. So as you can see on the screen, this is for a new customer. You need to obviously fill in the details and it even gives you the instructions what's going to happen. So once you've uh, gone through this, you can then obviously add that serial number and then they will make available the downloads for that product. And that's how they do it on the Nectar site. They don't have a download page where you can just go and download all your drivers and everything until you've actually registered the product and then they just show you what you can download. Um, I've already, obviously got an account here so I'm just going to log in using my account and as you can see obviously these are all my products which I can download the different drivers for. So what I need to do now is obviously enter my serial number okay, it's now telling me here it is, it recognises that product now down to me to say you know I can select more of these at a later date if I wish but all I'm interested in my particular case is uh, Windows 10 I'm actually interested in Windows 7 because I do have a, another machine which I run Windows 7 on uh, when it comes down to the door well with me the only one I'm interested in is uh, Reason there it is but I'm not interested in the rest uh, let's just quickly submit that and so now I've now got a new section and as you can see it, it just got my different files so first thing that I want to download is obviously going to be the driver software and obviously save it to a directory of your choice I actually have a directory set up for my downloads and hardware stuff so I'm just going to quickly save that and then obviously what we need to do sorry let's come up on another screen so let me pull this over so here, this is the, the actual zip file itself. So obviously, first thing to do, anything like this, obviously we've got a firmware upgrade as well. So I'm just gonna pull that out. And in fact, I'm gonna create myself a, a new folder under here. And let's call that T6. Grab that and put that into the, Six volt, and it should be really a simple case of really just running up the setup. Simply just going to click next, normal sort of agreement which you need to agree to, what you're wishing to have support for. Um, to keep it simple, but I'm actually going to put both down. I can't really see there being too much difference of what they're actually going to install there because it's going to be the same mappings and things. And that's it, installed. Nice and straightforward. So now I'm going to be quite happy to actually uh, plug 
my uh, nectar in because I say I haven't done that at this particular stage so far. And uh, I haven't talked about, obviously, we've, we've got ourselves a USB, we've got a MIDI out, we've got a foot pedal, and there's also an expression pedal as well as you on offs. I happen to have uh, all my cables to hand already. Obviously, it doesn't matter if you don't have any uh, expression pedals or anything else. It's the sort of thing I recommend for this kind of keyboard. And uh, let's power up. So I'm being prompted there for a firmware update. I don't know if I can get a closer shot of that. So let's go and get the firmware updated. So from where we download them files and we unzip them, obviously, as I say, we've got the firmware directory. And this is the file that we need to run. It's this MK update. So let's just double click on that. Okay, so obviously it doesn't recognize it. So I'm gonna just click on the more info and just say run anyway. Okay, so now it's actually telling me I'm not in my um, firmware update mode. That's because when you power on the necktie, you've got to hold down a certain key combination, and that should get us into the firmware mode. Um, and to get all that information, that should actually be in this setup file. And it's usually hold down a couple of keys. Let's have a look and see what we've got here. Um, okay, so here we go. Oh, there we go. So we need to switch it on. Fader nine. That's the shift. So it's going to be these two keys here. Two keys there. So it's going to power it off. It's going to hold them two keys down. Power it back on again. Screen's absolutely blank. It's not really telling me anything. Let's go back to switch back to that program. Okay, here we go. It's now telling us it's actually in the firmware update mode. So we simply need to uh, load the file. So this is where you have to remember where you've installed stuff. Nice to come up with that actual that's the actual file we actually downloaded earlier. I'm just going to click on open. So now it's loaded. So we now need to hit the program to program it. So it's a couple of stage things you've got to do. You know, I so we've got to put the the actual keyboard into update mode. We then load the, the, the bin file, the actual firmware, and now we just got to click on program. And obviously at this stage, make sure whenever you do firmware, you're not running off the battery. Make sure you're always running off the mains. So let's just let this run through. Excellent. So that's done. I'm pretty sure there used to be like a verify, but obviously they've built verify straight in because it's obviously verified it as well. So the next thing what we need to do is obviously restart the nectar and close that up data. So I'm just going to close that off. And the next minute I'm going to do is hit this off. Click this back on again. And there we go. We've actually got ourselves a bit more of a, a screen going on there. So I think the next thing we need to do is get Reason up and running. So I've got my Reason up and running now. So what we need to do is obviously bring it across. And what we need to do is set up the surface controllers. So obviously under Edit Preferences. Surface controller, and yeah, I've got uh, quite a lot of surface controls already set up. But what we should be able to do is just click on the auto detect, and it should whiz through these and it should then find our nectar. 
Okay, now we've finished detecting, and really, you should put these at the bottom. And hey, there we go, we've actually got the two. And you get two because obviously one's to do with the mixer and uh, the other one's to do with the actual keyboard itself. Um, what we used to have to do with the other one as well was, was actually to lock off the surface controller. I don't know if we still need to do that or not, but under options, you've got this surface lock in here. And what you usually do is, so the mixer mode, you don't want it to follow the master keyboard. I've got a lot of stuff going on here. We want, we want this to actually be locked out to the, the master section. So we click on that and we lock the mixer mode to the, to the master section. So it's time to test it. So let's just grab ourselves an instrument across, bring up the keyboard, and it should be working. instrument mode and yeah so we've got things already mapped out so let's see if things are moving already um, and obviously we should have a mixer mode as well and I'm actually moving the slider sorry the camera's not on it but yeah that seems to be working as well so uh, Excellent, we're all go. Well, that ends the setup video, but I'm going to be doing future videos of a basic usage and review of the T-Series, a different one of a deeper under the hood look at the keyboard and the settings, another one of the mappings and how to create your own. I'm also gonna be doing a comparison video between the Impact T-Series and the P-Series. So do stay tuned for the future. Thank you for watching and bye for now.